my chat also open. <laughs> I have chat window also open, so you can also okay. always interact. Okay, but yeah, just keep your uh, you know uh, audio muted so that you no know, we don't have any disturbance. So I was as I was telling you, uh, this is a Python shell, and this is where you can write some of the code to you know if I write like uh, right any simple command, Python is going to execute that. Okay, so if I do that, you see that I'm able to execute in the Python shell. You can write any command. This is called a REPL shell, R-E-E-L. That means that no, you can inter you can write interactive uh, commands on this. So as soon as you write a command, you will get the response and then the prompt will wait for the next command for you to enter, right? So you can actually write, and this is useful to try out a, a feature, uh, try out any, any new, I'm saying anything you want to see, okay, what is the syntax? So for example, let's say if I want to import math and uh, I want to see what math contains, you can use a dir function on math, and then you can see all these things here, right? So this console is pretty much useful to write small uh, code snippets, but this is actually not, uh, when you start programming, you will, Okay, so, right. Okay, so, yeah. So, so now whatever, let's say if I define a variable, I can define a variable, something like this, right? And I can say, and I can perform any arithmetic operation. But thing is that if I close this shell, then, then all my, whatever code I have written is lost. So the better way is to create a file. You can even use a simple uh, notepad to write any Python code. And then you can execute that code. Like for example, I can write, uh, I can write it uh, right here, right? So I'm just going to open a notepad, right? And I'm going to just simply write uh, a Python command, hello world. And, and I will just save this file on my computer, just pressing by pressing, uh, you know, control S and I select a location and I give it a name saying hello.py. Python files, Python code, you should have an extension of .py. And then I have saved this file. Now I go to my, command prompt, you can go to your command prompt. And when I list the files, you see that my py, my file is right here, hello.py. And to execute, I'll simply use the command, right? So I'll use a command Python 3 and provide the file name and it will execute this file. So you can have your code, you can execute uh, any, any file like this, as simple as that. There is another uh, environment which you, you can also use, which again comes when you install Python. So when you install Python, you get something called idle. Okay, you get idle. Uh, and then you can just launch idle, it will get stored. I'm just going to launch idle. And once we have this idle, now you see that now I'm getting the same Python shell, but it also gives me a way to write a file. No, basically it gives me a way to write code even in it provides me a code editor as well. This is a simple code editor. So here also I can write anything like I can say X is equal to 10, Y is equal to 20. And then I can print X plus Y. And so I'm printing the sum of these two numbers. Okay. And I'm just going to not to, I'm just going to save this file somewhere. So I'm just going to save it again there. And I will say uh, calculator.py. And to run this, I can just go to the run option menu. I'll say run module. And it will run this file and it will show me the output here. So you can see that it is showing me the output right here. Okay. So this is idle. You can use that as, as well. And then uh, again, this is a very basic code editor. The best code editor, which is used in professional environment, 
that would be Visual Studio Code that's available on all, for all the platforms, uh, Windows, Mac, and even in Linux. So you can use Visual Studio Code. And this is, uh, again, all these operators which I'm telling you, they are free to install and free to use. So I'm just, okay, so just a second, okay, admit. So I can pretty much, uh, and another advantage of using Visual Studio Code is that you can switch different, different uh, code environments. You can have a Java project or you can have a C++ project or you can have web development or Python. You can easily switch between different projects. It makes it really easy. And once you are here on this code editor, you can actually just simply create a folder or file and then you can write, start writing the code. So I'm just going to create a folder saying that, okay, so, so I will actually come here. I will select this and then I will create a folder and then I will say session, uh, session 28th May and I'm just going to <clears throat> just going to so this is my selected and I'm I'm going to click on this icon the first icon it is going to create a new file right here and then I can write uh, no I can create a file and then it opens up here right here and again, I can actually create a simple calculator. Uh, so I'm using a X variable, Y as a variable in Python. You can simply define the variables just like, you no, know, you don't have to provide the prefix like int float and those, those kind of things. You don't have to provide the prefix. Uh, so you can simply create it like that, depending on the value which you are assigning, depending on the value which you're assigning this, a variable will get its data type. Okay, so I have defined uh, depending on the value, right? It will get the data type. So I can simply uh, do, you know, create variables. Variables are containers which hold value and they help us to build the logic. And then I can simply, you know, print and then I can say sum is equal to, and then I can simply say X plus Y Okay, and similarly, I can create other statements as well. I can say difference x minus y, all these kind of things I can do. All the ba basic arithmetic operators are available to you. And this is the product. And this is the division value. So I can get all that. So these are my operators and then I will simply not to execute this. What you should be doing is I will just put it here. Close smaller the window. Yeah, so you can simply, so I'm just going to close this terminal. What you can do is you can just simply to execute this file, you just go to this terminal, you go to new terminal, and then you select, I'm selecting the path, path, uh, for which I want to open the path. So uh, this path is open and I can simply uh, go to session 28 May. And then you see my file is right here and I can simply run this. So uh, students, I am on Mac platform. So uh, for Windows, instead of LS, you can just simply type IR to get the directory listing. So, I can simply execute this and see I'm getting my response right here. And so these are the three arithmetic operators. There are three more arithmetic operators. They're again, very useful operators. And uh, so the first one is the modulus operator. Modulus, I'm um, so this is the fifth operator. And you know uh, what modulus does. It you know uh, gives you the remainder. So remainder is what you're going to get and then then there is something called exponential operator, which gives you the power. Okay, power is like, no. So this will be like X raised to the power of Y. And then I can also get uh, the flow division. Okay, flow division. Uh, so flow division is basically double slashes. So flow division is basically a normal division, but the result is going to be flowed. 
uh, floor means it will be uh, it will be taken to the you know uh, integer which is very which is next to that number so when i run this you see that i'm getting all this so i'm getting so the power value is you know a 10 to the power of 20 this is what is the value i'm getting i'm getting the remainder of 10 divided by 20 and i'm also getting the floor division so the division value of x and y would be 0 0.5 but flow division will make it zero because it will go to the next integer. So th this is how you can actually, uh, this is how you can write your, you know, command, your code, your, you can write your code in this kind of editor. This is much more professional editor, which, uh, which is used in the, uh, in the development environment by professionals. So you can use VS uh, Visual Studio code, right? So now let's, uh, so there is another pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, tool which is called Jupyter Notebook. This is something also which you can use. Uh, no, if you're learning data science, AI, ML, then this becomes really useful for normal programming. Generally, you don't use Jupyter Notebook. You would be using something like uh, VS Code. So that's where you should use it. But otherwise, you can use Jupyter Notebook and. Uh, uh, so Jupyter Notebook is what you can use and installation of Jupyter Notebook is, I'm saying this, this is again a free software and you can pretty much very well use that. Okay. You can install. Now the advantage of Jupyter Notebook, I'll just show you what are the, how to use it. Okay. So yeah, so I think somebody is helping in getting the students in. So yeah, please do that. Uh, right. So. Fine. So now the advantage of Jupyter Notebook is you can have like text, images, and then you can also have code which you can write. Okay. For example, if I want to, you know, write a code. Now you see that I have introduced a new cell, and then it says me is the type of the cell is code. Okay. And this is where I can write any command. So x. Okay. This is fine. So nobody got it. So if, if I write, now if I have x raised to the power of, let's say three, so I can do that. And then now to execute, I can just go and say run. So it will execute cell by cell. And when it executes this, it is going to show me the output as well. So this is my return value, which is, is going to show me here. Okay. So uh, this is what is Jupyter Notebook and you can pretty much use it if you, it's actually you, uh, by default, it is used by data scientists and uh, for AI and ML, uh, right? So now we will actually quickly go through it now, go through the Python, some, some basic functionality of Python. And if you have any question, feel free to interrupt and ask. You can also type your question in the chat box. Now, <clears throat> So we have, uh, you see that now we have, we can define the variable like this. Now, this is a simple arithmetic operation. We have done this. Now, uh, uh, no next data type is, which is uh, again a primitive data type, it's called string. Strings are super useful. And in Python to define a string, you can define with single quotes and you can also define with double quotes. There is absolutely no difference uh, between the strings. They are absolutely the same strings. Uh, so you can opt either one of them uh, to define a string. And so I've defined the string. I can simply use a variable name and I can uh, no, uh, assign it a string value. And these two string, uh, string words are concatenated using the plus operator. So now I can do all, I can basically do that and I can print the name and then strings in Python supports indexing and slicing. Now, what does indexing mean? Indexing means is you can access any character using the index, index of uh, that particular character. Now indexing in Python starts from zero. Uh, so Python again is based out of uh, C. So pretty much, uh, all the library which is available on C is you can use it in Python as well. So there'll be a wrapper around that C library which you can use it. So the word so there are different implementations of Python. I am actually using C Python. Okay, I'm using C Python. 
and uh, so I'm just going to write it here. I'm using C Python. This is the most popular version of Python, which is used. This is actually used professionally uh, by you know, most of the developers. So now you see that I have defined this. Uh, so let me just define this again. So I have defined this and if I run this, you see that when I'm running this, it is the the name is assigned and then I can again run this. I, I'm using the shortcut key to execute it. Now you see that I'm getting this uh, value. I can actually use indexing to get any value. So let's, so R will be at index zero. So I can get that and I can get, let's say if I want to get uh, B, I can also get B using the index, right? So uh, Python string supports indexing and Python strings also supports slicing. Now slicing means I can take a substring uh, from the Python. So let's say from uh, name, name is this, I want to take out Rob. Okay, so to get Rob, so I will just provide the index of R. I am saying that, okay, I want to slice Python from R to B. So I'm just going to provide the index of R as zero. This is my start value, zero is my start value. And then I'm going to provide the index of i. i is the stop value. So index of i is actually three. Now the stop, the stop value is actually exclusive. Uh, so I have start and I have stop. Now stop value is exclusive. Stop is exclusive, which means uh, stop value will not be uh, taken into account. So you will get characters just before that okay so now if i do this you see that i'm getting rob i'm i'm able to slice it uh, like this okay so uh, python uh, string supports uh, you know, and then there are a lot of uh, operations available for strings the best way to check on all all the operations you can simply go to your python console and this is really uh, you know, a good way. So if I define, let's say name is equal to John, right? So if I go to, I can see all these methods which are available. These are all the operations which are available. The important ones are, uh, important ones are, no, I'm saying you can try them, try all of them. Let's say I want to use capitalize, right? So I'll just simply use capitalize and so capitalize means it will make it as a title right so j is already capital so you will not see any change but i can make it to upper so it i will get all upper i can take make it lower and uh, i will get in lower all these kind of things you can do these operations you can also let's say if i have a special really important one is <clears throat> your okay so there are students who are still joining now so okay so let's say if i assign it john now you see if i print it has uh, no leading and trailing spaces so i can simply use strip which will uh, strip you know all the white spaces from beginning and the end so this is one of the useful ones uh, you can uh, another useful one is the split. Let's say I have, uh, no, I have colors and I have red, blue, and orange, right? So if I say split, uh, it's, going to, <clears throat> it's going to split it and I can specify the uh, delimiter. So if I just specify the delimiter, you see that I'm getting it has split and it has get, uh, returned me something like uh, array. In Python, we call it list. We will come to that quickly. So you can see that I am able to split using this uh, this uh, delimiter uh, comma, right? So these are operations. You can try them. You can practice them and uh, you know, uh, see how, what it does. So <clears throat> now another basically way is uh, you can also use a 
dir function on python console and you see that i'm getting all these values i'm getting all these all these functions which are there i'm getting it right here you can use that you can also use help function you can use help function and it's going to uh, okay so help and okay string is not defined so i help is get the interactive help utility okay so if i do this and then i say name so okay so yeah so you can get all these uh no values here so you can actually use help now to get out out of help you can say exit uh yes or you know you say say quit you once you say quit you will come back to the console so these are the different operations which you can try right so that is about string you can practice them so uh python supports all the data types as i said that integer integer float so to define a so this is my integer so if i want to check what is the type of x it's tells me it's an integer type i can have a float value i can say 1.5 so if i say type y you see that it gives me float value and then the strings you have anyway seen it right so right so if i say type of name you get this right and uh, then we also have boolean value right so boolean is let's say i have a flag and i can set the value as true or false so in python the acceptable values are true and false okay true and false for boolean value right and boolean you know that is used to for any condition right to determine whether any condition right so now this is uh, and you can check what is the type right you can check what is the type and then you get this now so this is the type of uh, the variables now there is something called id as well id indicates the identity of object so to say whether two di two different variables are same object or not you can compare their ids like like say for example if i check id of x you see i'm getting this value if i check id of y i'm getting a different value right this means that actually they are different objects id refers to something to do with the storage location some value calculated depending on the storage location so it's really a unique value which is available so so yeah so these are basically the different data types which are there these are the basic, the different primitive types which we have now okay so we have okay now <clears throat> to display any value you can very well use the print uh, function and you can check on documentation of print using the help and then you can see that okay this is all my print uh, which is there and this is the syntax and this is saying that print can take uh, no unlimited values you can provide any number of values uh, using uh, a separate basically using a comma as a separator and then you are going to print that so i if i use print i can print x comma y comma name i can do all that right so all this is there which i can do it so <clears throat> this is basically you can uh, use print not to take input right so these are two uh, very important operation which you have to do print and input right so input is <clears throat> you want to read any values from the user so i can say okay enter your name right so the person is going to enter the name and i can say john and this is what i am going to get it i can even store this value i can store this value i can store this value in any variable right so if i say name and then i say john do 
right? So you see that I'm getting this value stored in John Doe. So this is how you can take any input. Now, if you want to take input of a number, so let's say if I say num is equal to input, int uh, uh, number, right? So now if I provide a number, let's say I provide a number as 50, you see that I'm getting this as a string. Now you can actually convert it into a integer because if you want to do arithmetic operation, you will not be able to do it on string. So you can use the int function. So these are the help function which are available to you, which you can use, right? You can use and you see that this num which was showing a string. Uh, now why it was a string at, at the first place is because input function will take the uh, input from the user and is going to return you a string, a string value. So I can convert it into integer and then I can very much uh, do the operation. Uh, so you see that I have tried to convert it, but what has happened is the, even though it has converted, this particular uh, uh, no, variable is unaffected. You see that it is still a string. So I will have to assign it back. Uh, if I assign it back to num, now this is my number and I can perform any arithmetic operation to it, right? I can do whatever arithmetic operation I want, I can do it, okay? So, so like int, float, you have all these utility methods which are available to you, which you can use, okay? To convert into values, different values. Now, <clears throat> So this is basically, so these are the operators which we have already looked into it. And then, then we look into comparison operator, right? Comparison operator is basically the relational operator. It tells you what's the relation. Now you have X and we have Y. So you can check is X greater than Y. So the result should be true. Indeed it is true, right? And then you can do that. Now, so these are the different relational operator and this is very well, you can use it. Then apart from relational operator, we have logical operator also, which logical operator lets you combine two conditions. So I can combine, let's say, is X greater than uh, zero and, so we, I will write and, right? Y is greater than zero. So it will say true, right? So uh, again, this logical operator works in the same way as it, you know, in the as it works in the other languages. So if both the conditions are true, so and is going to give me true value. If any one is false, if I say is uh, no y less than zero, then in that case, it is going to give me false. So other than and, another logical operator is we have or. And or is any one, if any one condition is true, it will result in the true value. So this is how you can combine various conditions uh, using logical operator. There is something called not as well, which will just reverse the value. If it is true, it will make it false. So uh, I, if I say not true, it is just going to flip it to false. So any condition you can flip the result if that's the requirement, right? So these are, this is the truth value and you can see that how it works. Now, these are the different uh, no, logical operators. This is what is there. Another operator is the membership operator. Again, a very useful operator. So let's say I have this name and if I want to find whether uh, no, John is part of this string or not, so I can say John in name and to say true because John indeed is part of this string. If I say, uh, no, uh, is Tom part of this string? It will say false because it is not. So in is a membership operator. I, I can also use not in. Not in is going to reverse it. So Tom not in name, it will say true. Yeah, Tom is not in name, okay? So this is the membership operator. Then there is an identity operator. So I told you about IDs. Now Python is actually an object-oriented programming language. Uh, anything you define is actually an object in Python. So uh, now every object is stored as heap, right? And it will have a memory address and uh, depend, right? Uh, so depending on the ID value, 
now the memory address translates into some ID value, which will always be unique. So if you want to find whether two operators, whether two objects are same or not, then in that case, you can use the is and is not operator. Like for example, if I have X is 10 and Y is a different number, if I say X is Y is going to tell me false. If I say X is not Y, it will say true, right? If I have a Z, which is equal to X, now Z is also the same. And if I say Z is X, it says true. This means that Z and X are pointing to the same object. They are pointing to the same object. So uh, yeah, I'm saying, uh, so we can also say since they're pointing to the same object, they are like references, like in C++ and Java, they are like references references to the object and using references, you can access those objects, right? So now these are the identity operators. Is instance, you can check uh, whether a particular, uh, whether a particular variable is of particular data type. So you can say is instance, X is instance of int, so it will return, return true, X is instance of float, it will return false, right? Now like uh, C, C++, Java, you have compound operators available uh, in uh, Python. So compound operators is nothing, but if I want to, let's say, increment uh, X by one, now you see that I have got this increment, but now since this variable is repeating on the both the side, I can use the compound operator. And to use the compound operator, I just have to take the operator before equal sign. And this, this will translate exactly into this particular one. So this variable is going to be no, to, will also be taken on the right side. And if I do this, you see that even this is getting incremented. Now in Python, you don't have uh, uh, this increment operator. You don't have this kind of increment operator in Python, okay? So now uh, Python uh, is a little bit different than C, C++, Java in the way you write a syntax. The, uh, the design philosophy of this language has been to make it absolutely simple. And then the reason it was, uh, the reason uh, this was created uh, was to write simple scripts to do daily jobs, like uh, check the status of the server or automate some process. So Python is anyway, very useful in DevOps, uh, which is DevOps is actually a division which takes care of the you know, production servers make sure that the no, health of the production servers are fine uh, and they take care of the infrastructure. So that is what is DevOps. So Python is heavily used in automation. Go ahead. Okay. Any question? Okay. So, uh, so Python uh, was built like that. And then in past, like, uh, uh, 15 years, Python has started gaining popularity as a web development framework. Uh, Python has a very strong web development framework called Django. This is super powerful and one of the best frameworks uh, in the world and heavily used. Uh, Django uh, is basically for very fast development and also uh, it provides you, you know, very, very uh, you know, high performance websites. So that is what is Django. That's a framework which is built on Python. There are other frameworks also like uh, you have Flask. Uh, so, so even that is a good framework for web, de web development, but Django is uh, very nice. So then uh, since 2000, uh, pretty much 2015, now since Python was very easy to use, a lot of scientists and uh, a lot of scientists and mathematicians adopted Python and they started creating libraries. So that's why Python became very rich in mathematical libraries. Uh, so for numeric calculations and all, so Python has become very uh, popular in data science, AI and ML. And that's how Python as of, as of now is the most popular programming language in the world. Not just because of uh, data science, AI, ML, but also because uh, it is used for automation. It is used for uh, web development. You can also create actually GUI based application. You can also create like uh, games. So Python is actually a general purpose programming language. Okay. So these are uh, 
basically a little bit about Python. So I was talking to you about compound operator. Yeah, so I was talking to you actually that Python is a little bit different, right? So now you see that uh, since Python was the design of this language was that you should make it uh, absolutely simple to use. That's why we don't, you don't see semicolons, you don't see data type assignment. Uh, and then even no, one statement in Python is actually written in only one line. These are the good programming practices. And to learn more about uh, practices, good programming practices, these are the some guidelines. As you become familiar, you can refer to it. No, these are the software guide, software development guidelines in Python, which you should adopt, right? So it says uh, simple is better than complex, readability counts, beautiful is better than ugly, explicit, explicit is better than implicit. All these are uh, you know, best programming practices. So Python follows that uh, ground up from beginning, it follows very good uh, programming practices. Uh, and that's how it is, it is designed, uh, right? So now, so moving on, now let's look at another one of the, another difference, which you may find it, okay, this is again different uh, than, uh, than C, C++, Java. Uh, now why? Because, uh, no, how do you create blocks? Now, the way we create blocks is, so let's say if I am, I create a new file and then I will say uh, blocks, right? So block is basically a logical unit of code which you want it to be executed together. So let's say if I have uh, x is 10 and I want to write if x is greater than five, we print that uh, x is greater than five. We can do something like that. You see that this is my block of statement. Block of the statement is basically the logical, uh, basically you no know, statements which you want them to be executed together. So I can say, so shall we end the session by 1050 as students? Okay, sir, sure, we will, we will end it. We will end it in five minutes. Right, so, okay, so now if I have other statements in this block, I can basically very well do that. X is, uh, I can have like, no, let's say I want to increment X by one, right? So, uh, so now you see that to define the block of statement, I'm not using any curly brackets and all, but instead I'm using a space, even a single space is good enough, but have no, Ideally, you should be using a tab. Tab is equal to four spaces, and we can do all that. And to end the block, you simply remove the indentation. So I can just simply remove this indentation. And now if I want to run this, Python 3, and then I have this blocks, and you see that I'm able to get all my uh, no, values there. So, so this is how I construct my if statements and this is how I, I design the block. So any block in Python is defined like this. Okay, so defined like this, you need to have some, you, you just need to have space. You don't use curly brackets. Okay, you don't use curly brackets. Now let's look at uh, other data types which are again very useful. So the first one is actually the list and list is like your, uh, so let me define list here also. Let's say I'm taking the lists of fruits and I have, so list is like arrays from other languages. Now in Python, if you're referring to array, you probably mean list. Okay, uh, list is super flexible. So, okay, instead of fruits, I will just say some values and the list in Python, act like arrays only thing is they the list can be heterogeneous and it does not have a fixed size right so i can define different type of data types right i can have another list inside it i can have another list three comma four i can have all that and then i can actually access the values 
access the values using the indexes. And in Python, as I, as I told you, the indexing starts from zero. So this is how I can uh, do that. And when I'm now, you see that when I'm running this, I'm getting this first value. And uh, let me just show you right here. And you see that this is a list and I have a lot of methods available. I can do append, I can have index, insert, all these things. You can actually try it out on your own. So now to append, if I want to add a new value, I cannot simply say, okay, so now to find length, I will use length function. And you see that this length is five. So to values, I cannot simply say that, okay, at index five, add something, add a new value, let's say, hello, right? It will fail, it says list index out of range, okay? To, so to append, you will have to use the, to add any uh, item to it, you will have to use append method. Once you do that, now you see that even this item is also part of this list. And you can, you know, you can use indexing to, access any values you can also uh, do slicing exactly the same way we had we were doing string slicing okay we were doing string slicing so values and i can slice let's say i want to slice from 10 to 4 i can provide index as one of this and then i'm going to provide index of true and then i'm getting 10 and 4 okay so so this is basically how you can define a list and then you can have nested list, list inside list. Then another data type is called tuple. Okay, tuple is works similar to list. Only thing is tuples are immutable. Immutable means they cannot be changed. The values cannot be changed. So the same, uh, so if I have T1 and if I define three comma four comma five, now see that this is my tuple and I can actually, I have only two methods, count and index in that. And I can actually access any items exactly like a uh, list, but I cannot, I cannot assign anything to it. If I, let's say I want to change the value at first position, I cannot do that. Whereas in the list, which was my values, Let's say if I want to change the first item from Apple, I want to just make it a number 100. I can make this change very well. In list, it's all possible. In, uh, in tuples, it is not possible. Okay. So yeah, so this is basically dictionary sets. There are other data types. Dictionary is like your hash map, key value, play, play, uh, key value pairs, you can use that. Then, uh, then yeah. So, then you have, you can use file operations to access any files in, in Python, right? Then you can pretty much define your own function. So far we have been using some of the functions like input, input, and then uh, print. You can pretty much create your own functions, right? And uh, you can actually uh, create your own loops. I'm sure you are familiar with loops. Uh, so we, in Python, we have while and for loop. And you can use, you no, know, like, you no, know, you can provide a condition to the while loop, and then you can provide the block of code. Similarly, for for loop, you can provide the. Basically, you can provide the list of items. For loop will let you iterate over each item. You can provide the list of the item, and then you can iterate over it. Like for example, if I want to iterate over all the items of values. I can use for loop and I can say item in values. Item is nothing but, item is nothing but uh, a variable, that's it. And if I run this, you see that I'm able to iterate over all the values, you know, Apple, 10, 4, all these values, I'm able to iterate over it. So this is how you can use a for loop. And yeah, I'm so there are exception handling and yeah, there is, yeah. So that, so this is basically the overview of Python. I'm, I know that I've gone very fast, but the idea was to just introduce you to Python so that you can start uh, you know, uh, doing some work and you can start exploring on your own. But yeah, Python is super useful and uh, super easy to learn. I'm um, saying so it is easy to, 
uh, start learning, but it is rather difficult to master, which is same with other languages also to master any language, you will have to you know, do a lot of work in that for significant amount of time. But yeah, Python is a way to go and you should definitely learn uh, about Python. Now students, actually I'm done with my introduction with Python for Python. So if you have any question, you can quickly ask. Otherwise, sir, it is over to you. So students, any question? You have been very silent. Uh, uh, actually, they're sitting in the classroom environment. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm going to stop my share. Yeah, and I'll just yes, send out a chori, sir, and the team wants to address you. Okay, sure, sir, sure. This is Dr. Arvind K, HOD of EC department. Good morning, sir. I, yeah, good morning, uh, Dhananjay Singh, sir. I uh, welcome you as well as I thank you for your participation today in conduct this particular session. There is a small uh, shloka in the Sanskrit. It says that, Acharyat padam adatte, padam shishya swamedhaya, padam sabrahmacharibhya, padam kalakramenacha. Means students will learn only 25% from their teachers. Remaining 25% they will learn in interaction with other experts or interaction with other classmates. And remaining 25%, Padam Adate, Padam Shishya Swameda. Remaining 25% they will learn by their own intellectual abilities. And the last 25% they will learn as time progresses. So this learning is a continuous journey in our life where nobody can say that we know everything of everything. We can always know something of everything and we should know everything of at least something. That is how we can become excellent in our uh, life's achievements or goals or even in careers. So I thank uh, wholeheartedly Dhananjay Singh sir for agreeing for conducting this particular session. And I hope that students will make a best out of today's interaction. And I also thank uh, our, uh, my colleague, Dr. Prithviraj for effectively organizing this particular session for today. And I thank all the participants and students for taking their time and being active in this uh, particular activity. Thank you, sir. We, thank you so much, sir. Uh, yeah, we request you to be part of our organization's activities even in future. Sure, 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 sir. Definitely, sir. Okay. thank you so much, sir. Uh, very well said, sir. Yeah, so of course, all those four areas are very important for students to learn and uh, yeah, learning is there uh, available in different ways. So thanks a lot, uh, sir and Prithvi Raj sir for giving me this opportunity to interact with the students. Uh, definitely, I would love to be part of uh, your organization. So thank you, sir. And we will hopefully see you. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, students. Bye, everyone. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. We will end the session. Yes, sir. We will, we, will, we will end the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much for this uh, session, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, sir.